I would love to read you the Christmas story straight from Luke chapter two. It says this. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. So all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And think about this, Mary's likely almost nine months pregnant. The the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem was about 90 miles. She likely rode on a donkey. I mean, could you imagine riding a donkey almost nine months pregnant, 90 miles? I mean, you know what's gonna happen next, right? Verse six, and while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be great joy to how many people? All people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah of the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly the angels joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heavens. And peace, peace, peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. That is the story of Christmas. But what I wanna remind you of this Christmas, the big idea I want you to think about is this. The story of Christmas is only designed to be the beginning. It's episode one. And God always intended for that story to continue in your life and in mine. And you might be thinking, what what do you mean the story continue? Like, what are you talking about? What, What I mean is, Think about it this way, in our modern day terms, when you've been watching a Netflix episode or something on Hulu or Amazon or Disney Plus, when you start a series and you watch one episode, when you get to the end of the first episode, if it captured you and you loved it and you were like, man, it left you on a cliffhanger, what did you do? What did we all do? We pressed that little button in the right hand corner that said, play next episode. Didn't you do that? The streaming companies know we want the story to continue so much. You know what now they do? We don't have to press a button. It just automatically plays in a few seconds. <laughs> that is, unless you've been watching The Mandalorian on Disney Plus, right? Anybody else watching this? It is the most watched show of 2019, over 100 million viewers. And yet, what do you know? You know that when you get to the end of one episode, Disney Plus has decided to drive us crazy and not release another episode until a week later. So a lot of you kids out there, you you go crazy because it takes you a whole week to watch little baby Yoda again, right? (laughs) But almost every other episode, almost every other show that we watch, what happens? I mean, for example, Stranger Things, which by the way was the second most watched show of all of 2019. But if you watch this show or any other episodes or shows like it, when, when you got to the end of the episode and it captured you, you wanted this story to continue, what did we do? So oftentimes, instead of being responsible adults and just going to bed after watching one episode, you said those famous last words. You looked over at your spouse or significant other or yourself and you said, let's just watch one more episode. <laughs> and that one episode turned into two, three, four. Some of you stayed up all night long binge watching a series. And kids, you're not off the hook because I've seen some of you on YouTube for kids go four hours straight, right? What's my point? It's simply this. What do we know about ourselves? 
We want the story to continue. We demand that the story continue. That's why we keep pressing play next episode. And yet, when it comes to God, when it comes to specifically the local church, what do we, we oftentimes take a different posture, don't we? I mean, so many times God starts to do something in our lives. He starts to write a good story. I mean, this thing's really, even today in this service, you know what some of you felt? You felt God begin to move in your life. And what do we so often do though? We don't press play next episode. We come to one Christmas service, we come to one service, and then we just leave, we walk away from God. You might say, what do you mean? Like, how would I actually play next episode with the story God wants to write? Like, if God started doing something, what would I do? Well, for one, you have to commit to and become involved in a local church. You have to. Because when Jesus left this earth, he only left one vehicle to spread his name and for you to experience Jesus fully, and that was the local church. It's the hope of the world. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're thinking, no, 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 pastor boy. I don't do church. I've tried church and it doesn't work. Or I don't do religion. Religion's not really for me. I'm only here in this Christmas service right now because if I don't show up, somebody gets mad, right? If I don't come to the Christmas service, I don't get to go to the Christmas dinner later on. Hey, I might get written out of the will, so that's why I'm here, all right? (laughs) I I don't know why you're here. I'm so glad you're here. But I want you to hear something from me. As the pastor of this place, I'm not into religion either. You might say, whoa. Yeah, religion is oftentimes a bunch of rules. You think Jesus sent his own son to this earth to die for you just to give you a bunch of rules? No. What you'll hear around here is Jesus came and we're here to make sure you get introduced to a relationship with Jesus, an adventure with him. That's what he wants for you. The best story yet. Not a bunch of rules. And so if you come to CCV, listen, you're not gonna get a bunch of rules. You're gonna find real people all the time opening God's word, getting into scripture, pressing play next episode on the story God wants to write in our lives. So yeah, maybe you've tried church in the past. I wonder if you've tried a church like CCV. So here's my challenge for you in 2020. Would you press play next episode? Would you commit to not letting this service be the only episode, or this service in Easter, or this service Easter and a couple other services a year? Would you let the story continue? And you know why some of you may doubt that you want to or or you even will? Because you wonder, based on your past and how rough it's been and some of the mistakes you've made, you wonder if God still has a good story for your future. I was having lunch with a young man just this past week, and he's had a really rough year, a couple years actually, He's made mistakes with women, he told me. He said with drugs. He's gone down a bunch of paths he knew were not right. And then he's made a bunch of mistakes. And in the midst of our conversation, he basically said, Ashley, I, with all the mistakes I've made in my past, I'm not sure God can still have a good future for me. And I got so choked up when he told me that because I want to tell you the same thing I told him. Do you think God, even when you have a rough patch, intends for you to be stuck I mean, when you watch an episode on Netflix and the main character has a bad episode, do you flip it off and go, it's done? I mean, when you're watching a football game, if you watch the Fiesta Bowl coming up in a couple days and Clemson's down in the third quarter, are you gonna shut it off? No, because you know Dabo Sweeney. You know what he's gonna do. You know sometimes someone's greatest setback can be their greatest setup for their best story, their best result yet. So why would you let the story stop in your life just because you've had a rough year? or a rough few years, or a rough life. If you're not dead, God's not done with you, okay? So listen, here's what I wanna tell you this Christmas. Here's what I wanna challenge you with this Christmas. Would you get involved in a local church? And if you're visiting from out of town, I hope you go back to your city where you live and get involved in a local church. But if you're here in Phoenix, let me tell you what you're you're gonna experience at CCV. A few things, number one, you're gonna experience real community. Real people coming alongside you to help you live your best life yet. But it takes living with other people because there's no solo Christians. And if you're single out there, listen, you can try to find Mr. and Mrs. right in a bar. I think you're more likely to find them in a local church. How's that? Number two, here's what you're gonna find at CCV, all right? You're gonna find hope for a marriage or a relationship that needs it. I've been married almost 20 years. 
I say this very openly when I preach. Marriage is hard. My wife would say that as well. And I do not know how a marriage works unless you put Jesus right at the center of it. That's what you're gonna find at CCV. Hey, here's the third thing you're gonna find here. You're gonna find help for your kids and students. Listen, I've got three kids. One of my greatest passions is we would, as a church, would have one of the best student ministries and kids ministry in the, in the country. I want that because I believe in the next generation. And I know what you parents want. You want the best for your kids. You cannot give your kids the best unless you give them Jesus. Would you let us help you with that this next year? We promise we will. Here's number four. I think you'll find peace and purpose in life. You know, so many times we chase peace in so many other things, and, and you're gonna find at some point, if you haven't found already, that you can't find peace outside of Jesus. That's why he came, to give you peace and purpose. Here's the fifth thing you're gonna find. You're gonna find a church that's about more than us. We don't wanna be a church that's inward focused. We wanna be a church that's outward focused, impacting our city and communities for Jesus. And to that end, we keep launching more services. We keep launching more campuses. As a matter of fact, right now on Christmas Eve, tonight, we launched our 10th campus in Verado. Can we welcome our Verado campus right now? We welcome you guys. But if you've been with us in December, here's what we did as a church. We, de we decided, we launched a, an initiative called More Than Us. And here's what we said. We're gonna take up an offering this Christmas and 100% of what we collect in this offering will 100% be given away to other local churches around each of our 10 campuses we've been working with for the last six months. And here's what we believe about these churches. They preach Jesus. They have high growth potential but limited resources. And we think if we, if we help them out, they're gonna grow. So every single dollar that we said we collect as a part of this offering, we're, we're, we're not gonna keep a dime. We're gonna give every bit of it away to local churches around each of our, of our campuses. And CCV, are you ready to hear what you are giving to change our city during this More Than Us initiative? You ready to see the number? Here's what you gave this Christmas. To date, you've given $3,434,876. Can we celebrate that? <laughs> CCV, you never cease to amaze me. You are such a generous church. And if you're visiting, you're thinking, that's a huge number. But listen to me, we will not keep one penny of that. Every bit of, the, every dollar will go to helping other churches around us because we wanna be a church that's about more than us. We wanna be about the big C church winning and growing, not just our church growing. That's the kind of church we wanna be. But can I get really personal with you this Christmas? What is it gonna take in 2020 for God to write a better story with your life? I think it's gonna take you pr pressing play next episode. And to help you with that, when you walked in today, you should have received a card like this. If you didn't get one, we'll get you one on the way out. On the back are two questions I wanna challenge you to answer before tomorrow on Christmas Day. If you're here by yourself, you can answer them. If you're with your family, I want you to answer them as a family. Kids, can I get your help? I'm gonna ask you to hold your parents accountable to answering these questions, how's that? And I know you kids will do it. Here's the two questions. Number one, my next step to being a part of God's story is what? You need to be a part of God's story in your life. Your next step might be to start attending every weekend between now and Easter, and you just test and see if God doesn't start writing a better story with your life. If you already attend CCV or another local church, I wanna challenge you to get more involved. Maybe you need to start serving or giving or getting a part of a, a small group of, and get in community. Maybe you need to finally take that step to get baptized. I think every person here has a next step. But here's a second question I want you to answer. My next step to share God's story with others is, how are you gonna start sharing your story with others? You know, in 2020, I, I hope you start inviting people with you to come with you to church because when we, wa when we watch a great ne Netflix episode or a great movie, what do we do? We, we tell everyone about it. And yet somehow we fail to tell people about the story that God's writing in our lives. And I hope this next year that you'll invite like never before so we can continue to see our city changed. But I think some of you still doubt if God can still do a great thing in your life in next year. And so here's what I wanna do. We're gonna sing one last song. And I'm gonna ask those of you that have been attending our church this last year in 2019, if God 
has done a great work in your life, if he started to write a good story, maybe in your marriage or with a, ki- a child or maybe with peace, maybe some of you, you're starting to really get over some of that anxiety you've struggled with. Maybe you got baptized this past year at CCV. Maybe you started coming back to church for the first time. I don't know what it is, but if you would say God has begun to transform my life, to write a better story in my life, during this next song, I wanna ask you to pull out your phone, you can do it right now, and turn on the flashlight on your phone and just hold it up for everyone to see. And if you're here today and you wonder if God could light up your life in 2020, here's here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. During this next song, would you just glance around at the lights on your campus? And as you do that, I pray that God whispers in your ear, that's what I can do in your life. I can light it up. But you have to press play next episode. You have to let the story continue. And I'm gonna pray that's exactly what you do.